Good evening ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Aussie Starcraft, we're bringing you some more Heart of the Swarm 1v1 action. That's up at left hand corner is our, well I'm going to call it Aqua Terran, Windy, Grandmaster on the Korean ladder. That's up at right hand corner is our Blue Zerg, it is EG Suppy, so Suppy quite well known as an excellent Zerg player. The map is Habitation Station, which is one of the new maps in the map pool in 2014. It's a lot of exciting new maps, a few of the old staples taken out of it. One of the most interesting things about this map is it does see the return of the high mineral yield. So it's been a while since these have been present in standard tournament play. So it is a very exciting dynamic. You'll see uh, Terran players in particular has all sorts of options for ducking in there and just going crazy beast mode with marines and that sort of things. High yield minerals always were uh, a lot of fun, so we'll see how Suppy decides to handle that, whether he decides to make use of them himself, or whether he decides to just go, go for some other strategy. But the high yield does tend to be your very volatile third base, so you have a second base here and a third base potentially either down in this location or up towards your opponent. But uh, uh, up here is likely, likely to be... Uh, very contested one for things like drops that are going to be cutting across the main a lot of elevator play back and forward between the main base and the third and just in general it's quite uh, there's quite a lot of terrain that can be uh, horrifically exploited things like siege tanks on the low ground can make life very difficult for zerg up up in the rich mineral yard and vice versa things like swarm host can can make an absolute uh, choke point out of some of these parts of the map so We'll see what our players have for us today. We have Windy's gone for his refinery quite quickly. Barracks coming up now. I imagine we'll see a Reaper come flying out of this barracks momentarily. Looks like Suppy's gone for his expansion first, followed by an extractor and a spawning pool. So we'll probably have quite quick Zergling speed out of Suppy. And uh, I'd be interested to see what's, what sort of... Uh, what sort of play comes out of Windy? I actually I haven't seen many of many of his games to date. Uh, I have seen one or two in the past, but uh, not a whole lot. So looking forward to uh, what sort of play style he has, whether it's uh, a mechin style or a bio Terran. Things like the uh, changes to the Widow Mine and the buff to Mech does has made it slightly more common to see Mech played against Zerg. So. We'll see if uh, Windy's of the mecking persuasion, or whether he in fact goes for something a little more standard, something like uh, Marine Marauder Mines and Medivacs, all those M's that mm -hmm play, or whether whether we'll see some mech out of him, which coincidentally also has an M. What is it with Terran and every uh, thing they have pretty much being uh, being labelable with an M, if that's even a word? So you have this Reaper moving out, just going to get a bit of a scout off and. Where possible, do a little bit of damage, but mostly these Reapers just do a bit of indirect damage, force you to delay mining. Occasionally they're going to mop up a few of these lighter units, but uh, things like the Reaper's health regeneration makes it just a little bit hard. So we have Windy there going for the drone wherever possible. He's not careful though, Suppy's uh, Zergling speed will kick in, and that, that poor Reaper will uh, go, down, go down under a mound of, uh, of Zergling. So the Reaper going to pull back, doesn't want to get caught out of position, so valuable for scouting, and uh, he'll, he'll want to make another run at the base in another minute or two to see what tech choices Suppy is in fact making. But we have uh, Zergling Speed almost finished up, actually have workers pulled out of gas, they're going very mineral heavy here, and uh, we'll likely see a few queens, possibly another base go down, as uh, as Suppy just tries to power up his economy as much as, much as humanly possible. Have not a, not a huge investment of Zergling, still the six, managing to keep all six of those alive. We take a look over at Windy's base, we have his orbital command actually already established on the low ground. We have the first few Hellions out the door, a few more following up, and a starport as well. Also have the next refinery coming down, so we could well see uh, some heavier, heavier, well not mech play, but I'd imagine a Banshee may well come out of here and in fact there's the Banshee. Will we see the cloak though? That's that's the question. Uh, we'll see just how much Windy's planning to commit to this uh, Banshee play. First Banshee on the way now. There actually isn't a whole lot in the way of any air defense. There's a few queens out front spreading creep and a few more under construction but currently we don't have any layer tech so particularly if that cloak's taken it could prove quite effective. But uh, it doesn't, doesn't look like Windy's 
going to be persuaded to grab that anytime soon. He's already already got the gas necessary for it, but obviously uh, deciding to go past that one. First Banshee's up. Will we see a second, or is it just going to be a little bit of Banshee harass? Quite a quite a lot of queens here. We have three queens from Suppy out spreading creep, and a uh, uh, fifth one actually in construction. So going to be uh, a lot of queens here spreading creep and that's I gotta say I really agree with this choice from Suppy these these queens are just going to give him such excellent vision and movement throughout the map it's it's just absolutely crucial for a Zerg player it's so easy to get out of position here and have the Terran just be able to force their way through need to be able to have the line of sight know where they're coming spot those drops as they move out and uh, also be able to keep your Zerglings and Banelings moving quite quickly so have plus one plus one on the way for Suppy and uh, nice positioning of the Evo Chambers there for any walling off. And uh, where is that pesky Banshee? It's nicking back and forth between these two bases. Unfortunately, Windy is focusing somewhere else. And uh, it did it did actually uh, aggro on the Queen. So any workers killed? Two workers. So not not quite the uh, amount of kills that Windy would have been hoping for with that harass. But a third, uh, a, well, a macro CC is already up from Windy. And it does look like it will be fairly consistent bio play out of Windy. We have uh, Marines and Marauders on the way now. Well, actually just Marines, but uh, the capacity to produce Marauders. Stimpak is almost halfway finished now. Suppy is just going to consistently uh, macro up, spreading his creep as best he can. As you can see, now I love this about Suppy. Suppy's got great creep spread, and you can see his overlord positioned up here on the high ground, so he can just spread this creep straight away up onto the high ground. And, that's, that's why his creep spread's moving so quickly. Nine minutes, and you'll see here's the halfway point on the map, and the creep's already almost towards that, almost at that halfway point. This Viking's going to pick off a poor Overlord. That's one kill for the Overlord. Now, see this, this Viking's rallied all over the place. I'm actually surprised he missed that Overlord, to be honest. Suppy's probably going to want to use that to get a bit of a scout off now before he goes down. It'd be able to see how many barracks, in fact, are in play. Momentary supply block, though, for... The windy, which is unfortunate. A few depots finish up is going to undo that, and uh, we have plus one, plus one on the way. So both our players macroing up fairly steadily. We do have uh, centrifugal hooks on the way for the banelings, and uh, fairly even supply. Uh, fairly, uh, fairly, fairly even supply. Both our players sitting about 103, 105, and uh, this this creep spread's just blowing my mind, guys. It's just just so quick and so good. Ten minutes. And it's going to be at halfway. It's going to be all the way to the bottom of the map. So great creep spread from Suppy. And see that that extra queen he built, the three queen spreading creep, just paying so many dividends here as these guys just, just push this creep further and further out into the middle of the map. So aliens are going to try and push this back. And they do get two of the creep tumors and the third one. So it is actually going to stop the creep advance there. A few uh, zerglings and banelings going up into the main base to try and uh, take it take out these marines that are dropping. A few marines do go down, but the remainder remainder of them do manage to make a safe pick up there. Hellion's actually forcing the creep right back now, so nice double-pronged aggression from Windy, dropping the main whilst pushing the creep back. And we have it, the marines back in the base yet again. Looks like Suppy is really going to need to uh, split these groups and try and uh, try and defend both fronts. He's starting to lose the ground that he'd won, or alternatively these mutilists should make it much harder for these drops to make it make their way into the main base. Looks like Suppy, both Suppy and uh, Windy avoiding the lure of the high yield base, instead electing to go for these other other uh, safer and easier to hold bases. These Hellions actually getting caught here by the Zerglings. Nice around there is going to clean up the Hellions. Check out the units lost here. It's actually quite even. 1290, 1250. So it's still anyone's game here, ladies and gentlemen, as we go in into what is essentially the mid-game. I, I love this multi-pronged aggression. Windy just very consistently is everywhere. He's in the main base of Suppy. As soon as Suppy pulls back with Zergling and the Banelings, you can see this force coming down. Widow Mines and Marines down here is going to shut down mining and what is now Suppy's fourth base. And uh, there's a lot of uh, Widow Mines in position against a potential Zergling counterattack. So this any Zerglings that sweep down here are going to take a lot of damage. There's going to be some epic Widow Mines there. That Widow Mine, 5, 5, 12 kills on that Widow Mine. So we have Sergeant Widow Mine. You may as well salute that bad boy. Widow Mines is doing so much damage. But uh, Suppy managing to swing down with the rest of his force and uh, clean up the Vikings and 
and Marines and uh, secure his fourth base once again. So very back and forth. Is, if this is another drop, Windy is just off the chart today. Another drop moving in across the top base. There, there is a danger to this <coughs> that we will talk about momentarily, but uh, not not just yet. Windy going to swoop out and clean up another Overlord. Going to go for a few of these uh, structures here. Can he? snipe the spore crawler and be able to make this a little bit more susceptible to other fans. That Marauder doing a great job of tanking the Zerglings for these Marines. Actually being very cost effective tucked away in that little corner there. Medivac does go down to the spore crawler unfortunately. And uh, I, th I think that uh, Windy wanted to snipe that uh, Spire but unfortunately wasn't able to quite get there. Mutal is heading back because of course here's Windy just pushing back down a a across the baseline. And this, this fourth base is going down ladies and gentlemen. And uh, there it is, Bruling's going to attack these Marines, but not enough to do any real damage. And uh, a few of these Widow Mines are going to protect these Marines against the inevitable Baneling Zergling counterattack. This Widow Mine still uh, on on cooldown here. Can he get any more kills? Mr. Corporal Widow Mine, six kills. There are uh, are a few Overseers, but the Zerglings are ahead of the Overseers. Going to be oh no, just just cleaned up before it can detonate there. There's some big detonations still on these remaining Widow Mines. We check out the cost efficiency, dead even in spite. Uh, Suppy just getting great engagements here. Widow Mine's positioned so well by Windy, but Suppy able to clean them up very quickly. It's a dead even game, 7,000 resources lots each. Windy just throwing down some more production here. I, I gotta tell you, I haven't seen a lot of Windy's play, but I, from what I've seen, I gotta tell you, I love it. Just absolute consistency on these drops and harassments, able to put a lot of pressure on Suppy's fourth base, managing to drop Suppy back to the same three bases he is, which is exactly where a Terran player wants to be and exactly where a Zerg doesn't want to be. But Suppy's found the opportunity, there's only one missile turret in the main base. Gonna clean that one straight up. Windy's production now very exposed. Looks like uh, Windy's just gonna power forward here. The Mutalist gonna be taking out some of these vital add-ons. Few Marines gonna stim and run back up, forcing the Mutalist away. Marines and Widow Mines trying to get in a nice position. Widow Mines are gonna burrow here. Lots of Bailings connection, a lot of Marines going down there. And uh Suppy able to manage to clean that up quite well. Both players drop into about 170 supply. Suppy clean up those medevacs, but we have another drop here as Windy cleans up the fourth base yet again. If Suppy can't hold uh, one of these fourth base, gonna find himself in dire straits in the next two or three minutes as his main base starts to mine out of minerals. Natural likewise starting to get on its last legs. Really needs to secure a fourth base so that he's got uh, two mining bases at all times. But uh, Windy just doing such a good job of splitting his forces. A consistent task force moving off to threaten the fourth base while the main army is able to posture very aggressively against uh, against Suppy's main force. The Mutalist here unfortunately flying straight into a few of these uh, Marines. 3-3 not quite finished up. We have plus two flyer upgrades up. These Mutalists swinging. Can they pick off a few of the medevacs? Nice connections from the Banelings. But uh, luckily for Suppy the Mutalist being consistently kept alive in in pretty pretty stellar style actually from Suppy here. Often see Zerg players getting a bit careless with their mutalist, but Suppy just babysitting these muters so carefully. Unfortunately no uh overlords with them at the moment, so they are a bit susceptible to widow mines. But uh Suppy so far been doing a great job of avoiding them. What I'd really love to see Suppy do is throw down a little bit of static defense. His constant uh, refusal to do that is, is starting to hurt him and this is what Habitation Station's all about. Tucking your army in against this high ground and uh, making life very difficult for the Zerg player. They have to clean you up like this. Mutalus against 2-2 uh, two, two Marines. Never going to be cost effective but just having to get those Marines off the high ground as quickly as possible. Suppy really ought to, ought to grab these medevacs wherever possible. It does make make the Terran a lot less cost effective, clean up the rest of those medevacs, only uh, one medevac managing to make it make it back and that's that's exactly what he wants to be doing. Every medevac that drops is is going to substantially uh, reduce the amount of irritation that he faces. You can see Windy here going for yet another drop. There are a few Zerglings and Mainlings here that can clean this up. But I am just astounded that we haven't seen Suppy throw down any static defense, instead relying for the very fluid uh, Zergling Baneling Muter. Still three bases for Windy, so he really needs to secure his own fourth base, and we can see it uh, 
hovering actually over from the main base, abandoning his main. Going to float that over the high yield and use that as uh, Windy unfortunately hasn't been able to hasn't been able to break Suppy, so forced to uh, rather than build an expansion, conserve the one from his main base, which isn't a bad choice. When you're going by, you don't uh, necessarily need this remaining gas, just a thousand gas, which I know for other races would be extremely crucial, but for a bioterran, not so much, not as not as crucial as getting these high yield minerals, which is just so uh, economic. Well. What's a good What's a good analogy for the high yield? They're they're like the they're like the wheat bix of of the Starcraft universe. They're the, they're the breakfast food everybody needs and just gonna power your economy like nothing else. That's probably a horrible analogy that no one will understand. But wheat bix are like the Australian cereal that all the sports players eat. So if you guys have wheaties or something like them, let us know down below. I'm not an expert in uh, breakfast cereals. These bailing connections is off the chart. Managing to get around and clean up a lot of these marines but taking a massive amount of damage. These Mulos actually taking some serious damage there. Both our players continuing to hover around 150 of these marines. Very nice splits from Windy is, is going to force Suppy back yet again. This queen going to try and throw down some creep but these marines are relentless. Miniguns blazing away. The queen does go down. These workers likewise getting picked off by the marines. They're going to stim and run up this ramp. This, this new uh, fifth base High yield, unfortunately, is going to go down. A lot of marines here firing on all cylinders. The base does go down. Suppy trying to muster a defense as best he can. Here. Massive mutilus cloud. How many mutilus is that? That's 27 mutilus. Wendy going to fall back just a little bit as uh, Suppy tries to produce enough uh, zerglings and mailings to try and delay these forces. But uh, Wendy starting to look just a little bit terrifying. He's his uh, bio pulling away for the first time so far this game. This big money maker over here for Windy. This is this is where all the money's at. But uh, Suppy going for it, but unfortunately Windy able to get get wind of what's going on just just in time. And uh, the big stim, all those units on yellow. It's perhaps uh, just a little bit of overkill, but uh, I, I guess he did manage to get there in the nick of time, and that did save all these SCVs that are just doing so much damage. So. Suppy gonna, Suppy gonna swing back in, these marines gonna have to stim again if they're not careful. Now what Suppy needs to do is he needs to loop around and do some damage to this before the missile towers are. This is four widow mines in the mineral line, this could be devastating if the mulas are caught out of position. And few marines down here, Un unluckily these marines gonna get picked off by a few, uh, no, gonna ma make it safely into the medevac, so... Suppy uh, starting to look like he's suffering just a little bit here as Windy, the constant aggression from Windy starting to pick him apart just a little bit. Though I, 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 by no by no means is Suppy out of this game. <laughs> Those poor Marines going down in a in a baneling acid explosion. I lo love the death anima animations in Heart of the Swarm. They've just done so much uh, to improve things like the physics and animations. Just fantastic. Another medevac getting cleaned up there as Suppy looks to try and establish the base. Actually going to grab a new fifth base down here, not retaking the high yield. And there are a few reasons for this. And if if these two will uh, let me catch me a breath for just a second, the reason that uh, the high yield hasn't been retaken here is because the other the high yield did fall and the main base is now out and the natural also out of minerals. It's easier for Suppy if he can concentrate his mining in one area like this. He's got two bases here, a third one virtually mined out now. Wants to be able to protect these two bases just a little bit easier rather than having to swing perpetually between this high yield and this base. So trying to make it just a bit easier to defend. We have Windy's taking up uh, fortification this high yield which is just going to allow him to produce so many units so quickly. Mined out is natural. Third base actually also mined out. So we are down to one mining base. But it is a high yield, so certainly going to be able to do a lot of uh, do a lot of damage with those minerals. Though uh, not not if Suppy continues to be able to have his way with the the Zerg main base. So you have Suppy just flying, doing massive damage to the production. Two Thors here saying no access denied. Mutalisks. There'll be no harass at my high yield. So uh, plenty of missile turrets and Thor's going to be slowing down the party there. But, oh, so, Suppy going to try and take a bite out of the pie, but uh, discovering it's not a pie, it's actually a lead, uh, 
lead bar, lead bar, maybe crowbar, no, baseball bat, yeah, more like a baseball bat, I'd say, when you, when you fly over a hill and in, instead of all, all these juicy little SCVs to pick off, you go, come face to face with two Thors and two missile turrets, that's got to be the definition of a bad day for a mutalisk. Wendy's swooping back into the main base here with a, uh, with another force of these marines. Going to pick up a few overlords as well, which is nice. Probably won't supply block Suppy, but the queen's definitely a, a good pickup. Going to hurt the lava for Suppy, and actually managing to pick off that uh, the infestation pit as well, which is definitely a nice pickup. The hive tech here also under threat, so we'll see how Suppy chooses to react. There's another strike force of marines threatening that high yield yet again. These marines actually going to get the spire. And that's it. that's going to be uh, quite devastating for Suppy. It means no more Mutalists after this. These Mutalists are going to try and get their pay back here. These poor, poor, poor Marines <laughs> forced to evac as, as their medevacs have blown out of the sky. But uh, Suppy's finding himself in a position where he has to rebuild all his tech. As you can see, Spire this time, it's come up down where these mining bases are. Suppy totally trying to relocate his vital... Uh, vital parts of his production and his economy to the same part, make it just a little bit easier to defend. But uh, the real question is, how is Suppy going going to win this game? He's, he's got a nice cloud of Mutalus, wants to be able to pick off things like these uh, missile turrets. Now the Mutalus are going to swing in here. Can they get in here and do the damage before these Marines come in? I think the answer, unfortunately, is no. A lot of workers are going down, though. Yeah. <laughs> We actually have uh, 12 workers killed there. Thor here is going to make life a bit difficult, but Suppy going to be trying to use his mobility here, going to pick off this refinery, so going to be delaying any gas income from Windy. And this orbital command actually is going to going to go down as well. There's a lot of mutilus here. Actually, it looks like it might be saved there. But, uh, grabbing a medevac here, and this is what you got to do with your mule. Oh, Zerling counterattack! Oh no! All all the SCVs. It's terrifying. There's banelings everywhere. It looks like. Will, oh no, Suppy not, not going to go for the bait of, of blowing up the base, but uh, I, I don't think Suppy knows that there in, in fact is no spare orbital command, so if he can pick these orbital commands off, it's going to be so beneficial for him. Oh, the Baneling landmine, unfortunately, was a nice, <laughs> was, was a nice uh, try there, but uh, oh, actually looks like there was a, a problem and the game was recovered from a replay so really glad Blizzard introduced that feature. We actually have a counter-attack going down here from Suppy and uh, there's this just mayhem all over the map as Suppy moves down to threaten his opponent's only mining base. He has plenty of SCVs here but uh, they're, they're going to go down so quickly. The orbital command, oh sorry, planetary fortress, sorry, does go down trying to bait the Mutalus over the mine. Poor Mulus is going to get shot out of the side, but the rest of these SCVs are just completely exposed. Suppy here trying to use those burrowed Baneling landmines that we saw Scarlet use so well on this map. Unfortunately, uh, Suppy's, Suppy's own base is uh, under fairly dire threat here. Suppy going to try and clean out this, and this, this will be Windy's Mining. There will be literally only one orbital command left, and that will be the sum total of Windy's Mining. But it looks like Suppy himself is going to be in some fairly dire straits. Going to need to throw down his tech that he is losing. He's, he's lost a good deal of his tech. Only 12 Zerglings in production. And the problem is, at some point, Suppy has to deal with these Marines. He ha if he can kill the Medivacs, the Marines can only stim for so long, which which is is a very crucial uh, piece of information. But it looks like Windy's going straight for the throat. He knows knows where the tech structures are, knows where the mining's taking place. He's come straight for this base here, so some point here Suppy's gonna have to engage. Is he gonna have the la landmines he needs to win this battle? I think a few Baneling landmines could could be what he needs. It's such a close game between these two. This Terran Force though is just looking so devastating. These these Thors can do so much damage. Any any damage he can get on them would be great but uh, it, it's a full-on base race and and uh, currently it's anyone's game. We, we know that uh, Windy's being revealed so uh, <laughs> Suppy did a great job there. He's, he's got no money left to build a build anything. Few workers left mining for Suppy. Going to be trying to save these drones best he can, so he can recreate structures where necessary. Big stim. Actually, no scan because there's no command center left. So, unfortunately, this this force has no detection. And uh, I wonder if Suppy's going to have cottoned onto that. Uh, he did see it when they uh, walked harmlessly over the top of them. 
can can he use that to his advantage? One baneling nest could uh, spell a world of difference for Windy, and Windy has to be so careful. Oh, picking up! That's so dangerous. If picking up, you can get picked off by the medevacs. Ideally, Suppy wants to do just that. Wait till Windy gets a few of his units in and sweep in and grab them unprepared. So we'll we'll uh, see just just what happens here. These zerglings could uh, potentially be wearing down these bases, but there are quite a few widow mines over there, so want to be careful. I think Suppy is just figuring if he can if he can get the ideal engagement. He's still in it with a chance, even though his main <laughs> base being absolutely blown blown to snot here. Unfortunately, no uh, minerals left to build anything. These extractors going to be some of his last buildings left. If we actually bring up the structures tab. We have four extractors and a hive. This solitary hive. So momentarily, we have three extractors, and that will be the sum total of Suppy's buildings. So, will Suppy be able to exploit this? He really needs to catch these units while they're separated here. Pick off a Thor here. Pick off a few Marines anything get and ideally kill some of these uh, medevacs they just make the marines so cost effective it's very hard for a zerg player to try and get the engagement that he wants particularly when you have the terran player just clustered up so heavily windy being very careful here both players being revealed there's such a close game between these two. Oh, the thors are actually exposed here can can the zerglings get out and get the thors there's two of the thors go down and a nice bailing landmine there. We'll go back and watch that one in just a minute. How, how many mutilists have we got? We, oh, we've got a we've got a handful here. There's just a few marines left and a half health Thor. These medevacs though, they're, they're what's making life very difficult for Suppy. Suppy knows that Windy has to come here, and this is this is why Suppy killed all of those orbital commands. Suppy, ha Windy has no way of knowing where these banelings are. Will he avoid them? Oh, he's so close! No, oh, that baneling takes everything out. There's only one Thor left. The Mutilus comes sweeping back in. The Thor gets picked up and dropped. Medivac's trying to make its way free, but it looks like Windy's forced a GG out of the game. What a game between Windy and Suppy. Comes down to the base race. No bases left. And it comes down to a few clutch baneling landmines. So that was absolutely phenomenal. Let's go back and watch those baneling landmines. I don't often rewind uh, midway through the game, but that baneling land, those baneling landmines need to be seen. I didn't even see the ones at the foot of the main ramp. As as uh, as uh, windy was coming back down, but it's it's these that just make it so uh, make the game so dangerous. We see Suppy setting up for the battle here, and these bailing landmines just tucked in underneath here. He knew windy had to come out. There were medevacs, but uh, unfortunately these marines gonna gonna force their way down to engage. And these two bailings here, they're gonna do all the work. And look, there they go and take out almost the entire group of marines just. What a what a setup from Suppy. It's clever play for him. Took out the orbital commands. He knows there's no detection, so the burrowed Bailey's definitely going to <laughs> definitely going to be the ticket. No his opponent has to come to this high yield. And I just just can't believe it. Wendy was so close to dodging that. He made his way and then decided, no no, I won't walk over that. That's too easy. And then actually pulled back over the top of it and copped the Bailey landmine straight straight uh well i'd say in the face but it was more like in the feet and uh and it was gg for Su uh, gg for windy and victory for suppy so hope you guys enjoyed it i absolutely loved it i loved i love the new map habitation station it's made for some just absolutely epic zerg vs terran and i'm looking forward to uh a 2014 with with it in the map pool. I, I think we'll see many, many more games just like this. So hope you guys enjoyed it. By all means, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We'd love to see you on the channel here in the future. If there's any games you'd like us to cast, uh, by all means, send us the replay to AussieStarcraftReplays at gmail.com or uh, just, just shoot us through a link and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Thanks, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next cast.